Through Sports, the Drive Through Sports podcast. This is officially episode number one. Uh, today's date is, help me out there, Brees, March 22nd. 322. 322.20. And it's kind of interesting what we're doing here is uh, because of the uh, coronavirus quarantining and stuff like that, we're actually in different places. I'm in Ackworth, Georgia, and uh, Paul is down in Orange Beach, uh, stuck there till at least Wednesday, I believe. Right, Paul? I'm uh, going to try to ride it out till Wednesday. All right. All right. Well, um, we got a lot to talk about. Obviously, there's, there's, there's so much going on. Uh, in the world, even though there's nothing going on in the world of sports in terms in terms of competitions or tournaments, like I mean, if you think about it, this would have been the weekend. Like today, we would have seen we would have watched two games and would have finished out the final four today. Um, you know, if you think about it, like what would have happened, you know, if it was you know the traditional schedule, it would have been it would have been us. Uh, finishing out the final four, you would have had the two national semifinals today, the last two, and uh, in about, you know, in about an hour or so, hour and a half, we'd be talking about the final four uh, and the four teams that were left, so, uh, or the ones that were going anyway. Uh, so, um, I don't know. What's things like on your end? Looks like you got. Got it. Back. You're back with us. Sorry. Back. Oh, my, my kids ran me out. I had to come back. <laughs> Brees, Brees has got a got a beach house full of kids right now, so he's trying to negotiate that. But um, quarantine, quarantine, yeah, it's tough with them in the, with them all in the house. I got to admit. Um, but yeah, so we you know we're dealing with a little mar- a little bit of March sadness right now, and, and not having not having that. This would have been our first full weekend uh, of the tournament, if I'm not if I'm correct. And, um, you know, we miss out on that great Thursday where you got 16 games Thursday, 16 games on Friday. So, um, but anyway, Brees wanted to talk about Tom Brady, and I and and I and I know maybe you want to talk about him because your Titans were mentioned as a possible suitor for Tom Brady. But you got to give me yeah. the on like, what was that like around Nashville? What was the talk around Nashville when you know he and Giselle were spotted? looking at houses and all this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, you know, there was a a lot of stuff coming out that he was around NBA and, you know, him and his wife were looking around and, you know, the thing started rolling and Vrabel's his boy. And, you know, all of a sudden, Hey, you know, this is a pretty good possibility here, but obviously, uh, you know, Tampa Bay's got something more to offer and, We'll go with Ryan Tannehill till uh, we win the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> well, well I mean, you... heck, you're going to have to now. You just signed him to a four-year contract and yeah. franchised uh, Derrick Henry. Um, and, you know, it's kind of interesting with what's happened the last couple last couple of days. I mean, you had, you had Tannehill sign the deal, the four-year deal. You had Brady two days ago, three days ago, signed the two-year $50 million deal with Tampa which included all kinds of special stuff that he wrote into it. Uh, so he basically got exactly what he wanted. What one of the, one of the deals that I thought was, uh, was kind of interesting because I'm here in Atlanta is the Todd Gurley acquisition. I, I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. Um, and, I, and, and I by no means am a Falcon fan. I just live here. Um, and I get to kind of make fun of all the Falcon fans that I work with. Because I'm a, I mean, I'm a Titans fan. I don't really follow, and it's hard to be a Titans fan, just like it's hard to be, uh, <laughs> you know, a Falcon fan. Um, but um, I don't know. What's your take on the on the Gurley thing? I mean, it just it just you know it just shocked me that they would uh, that pay him even hey, just one year deal, six million dollars. It's all about business. Yeah, Ty Gurley coming back to Georgia. Let's sell some tickets. Yeah, you know what? You 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 got a great. That's I mean that's a great point right there. Um, and also, um, I think he was due a quite a bit of money from the Rams. Um, had he had they kept him like till the next like one more day or something like that? There was some like there was a date where 
Um, if they released him at, before such and such date, they didn't have to pay him. I think it was twelve or thirteen million dollars that they yeah. saved on their end. So you're right; it is business, and it's you know. And, and to be quite honest, I mean, you know, as an athletic trainer, I knew something was wrong with him. Something was wrong with him, you know, at the end of that, I thought at the end of that Super Bowl season two years ago. Right. Well, you, you know, as a Titan fan, I see images of the future of Derrick Henry going into a Todd Gurley situation. You know, you, you limit him and carries and stuff like that. And that, that's all for the future of running backs now that – you know, it's it's going to come down to that that uh, you're not going to get a twenty uh, a twenty uh, rush kind of guy anymore. Um, you know, Henry's going to start getting beat up a little more, and you know, it's going to wear and tear. It's going to get him, but you know, it's it's. I, I think more of it now. It's going to be running back by committee, and so I think the Falcons, you know, did their due diligence in in trying to get someone of his caliber and being able to, you know, market him. So, uh, you know, I don't see it as a negative, but uh, you definitely would like to get him at a cheaper price probably. Yeah. I mean, um, and honestly like $6 million for one year. And I would imagine there's some incentives built in there, but um, you know, you dump Devonte Freeman, um, you know, who, who probably would get a concussion going to the salad bar at this point. Um, just, just not very dependable, and his production really dropped off. Um, so you got Gurley. You could have Gurley and um, Ito Smith in the backfield, um, and Quadri Allison possibly, with you know maintaining a lot of the carries. But but Gurley's great out of the backfield if he's healthy. You know, if even if he's eighty percent, you know, I'd take him at eighty percent over. At, at, almost anybody else in the league, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. I think so. I mean, you know, we uh, the Titans don't even have a backup running back. Uh, Deion Lewis, you know, they let him go. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, 80% Todd Gurley, sure. Why not? Yeah, I mean, and, and somebody else mentioned something uh, earlier, said saying that, uh, you know, that the, the, the Falcons, I think, had would, – would start – 10 top 10 draft picks on opening on the the first day. So you got Ridley, Jones, Ryan, the two offensive tackles uh, that they got last year in the first round. Then you get Gurley, that's six. Um, And then I think they've got um, three more guys that they mentioned that were, that were all first round, uh, top 10 guys all on the same roster. Now, some of those guys, you know, Julio Jones, I think it's still got a couple really, really good years, but I think you're seeing like that they're noticing that that window is possibly closing a little bit uh, for them to make a run. And especially you got Brady breeze Bridgewater in your division now at quarterback position. You yeah, know? that's good. That's a, that's a, that's a tough uh, out for, yeah. Uh, yeah. for the Falcons for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, and honestly, I think you're, they may actually benefit from this extra playoff team coming up. You know, the seven, the seven playoff teams, they may actually benefit from that this year. I could see that happening. Um, but, uh, as, as will the Titans. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, if they can't make Titans, if they can just keep playing defense and, and running the ball the way they do, just controlling games. Um, that's, you know, that seems to be, that seems to be the recipe, man. That's, that's, that's what works. And uh, yeah, the, the old Jeff Fisher days. Do what? Jeff Fisher. Back old Mr. Jeff uh, Fisher. That's right. That's right. Mr. Yeah. Eight and Eight. Yeah, he was. He loved to just run that football. Yeah, he just do do that all night, all day long. Um, but um, all right. What else? What else you got on the agenda? We got some pro football and. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, it, it could be anything. I mean, uh, could, you know, Brady Brady Hoyer or. Uh, you know, he just signed with the Patriots. Who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why do, 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 do I say, uh, Brian Hoyer, Brian Hoyer. See, I, I got Brady <laughs> on my cares, mind. Man. No, exactly. No, nobody, no, but see, nobody cares about that guy. No, I mean, you get, okay, here, here's another, okay, so here's the thing. Like, you know, 
because dr- dr- drive through sports is completely off off the cuff. This is just this is just me and you jacking around, um, just talking about whatever. Um, what we would have done when we were fourteen and fifteen years yeah. old. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whatever would have crossed our mind at this point, and um, uh, you know, at, this is unprecedented. Like what is going on? We have to talk about what is going on um, in the world, in our worlds. Um, I mean, we're both, everybody needs to know, we are both teachers. Um, I, I teach high school. You're at the middle school. You coach. Um, I've coached. I'm an athletic trainer. We were around athletes all the time. Um, what, I mean, have you heard from any of your kids that were playing sports? Like, you coach golf in the spring, so y'all were, like, right in the middle of stuff, right? Uh, well, actually, golf's in the fall here in Tennessee. Oh, okay. Uh, so we were in the middle of uh, baseball, softball track. Okay, baseball, softball track. Okay, so we in Georgia we do we do softball in the fall and golf in the spring. Gotcha. So that's that's a little different. But um, but yeah, um, I feel bad for these kids, man. That especially the seniors. Now you know, for you being in middle school, I mean, they'll, they'll you know they'll be able to play as freshmen or whatever. But uh, if you're, I mean, yeah, think about my that. biggest concern, my biggest concern, Adam, is as the athletic director, how am I going to get my uniforms back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, not happening, big fella. I know, I know. I'm going to have to start hey, telling them to yeah. leave by the porch. That's right, man. I forgot, I forgot. You're the big AD, the big cheese. Yeah. You yeah, well. just didn't have secret meetings. <laughs> <laughs> he is yet to take me to lunch if that means anything. oh man come on got to get you got to get you on that staff oh man well I mean you know and, and our I've talked with some of our I've talked with some of our coaches and you know we had I mean we had a we have a, the number one soccer team in the state guys the number four girls soccer team um our baseball team is number one in the region our golf team is probably one of the top three in the state I mean, you are – I mean, our football team won the state championship. So, we are, like – our sports are, like, just kind of hung out to dry. And I don't know if y'all have this in Tennessee. We have uh, something called a Governor's Cup where it's an all-sports trophy per classification. Do y'all do that? Uh, we do not do that. Okay. I, don't, I don't think. Okay, yeah, we do. Um, we have, like – they have a point based yeah, on okay. if you win your region – if you go advance to the first round, second round, third round in state playoffs, you get more points. Um, and they do, and you accumulate it guys' side and girls' side. So you do a, a, a combined governors, and then they do like a, 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 a women's champion and a men's champion, and then also a combined. And we were in great position to do really well. And, you know, now all of a sudden, nothing. So, you know, different states, Tennessee, Georgia, what is your thought as far as today, March 22nd, with currently what is going on, the state of affairs? What do you think? How do you think it's going to play out in Tennessee? Well, they they just had uh, a couple of meetings ago. They, they talked about trying to save the basketball state tournament. I don't know if Georgia was already done with their state basketball tournaments. We uh, Yeah, we finished ours, yeah. Okay, we were in the middle of the girls' tournament, and then the boys were going to follow the week after. And they somehow have, are, are trying to come up with a plan to try to save that, even if it goes late into, you know, May. And obviously, I think they've waved the white flag for the spring sports. Oh. And somehow they, they, somehow they want to f- try to finish this thing out, uh, the basketball for sure. So they're definitely looking to finish the basketball, but only because it was literally right at the end. Yeah, yeah. The semifinal the girls' games were going on, and the boys had were supposed to start the following week. Okay. Now, they still play those at MTSU, or where are they? They do. They do. The Glass House. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Murphy Center, huh? Man. Still the epicenter of <laughs> high school basketball. Wow. Man, oh, man. Um, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, I, I guess just thinking, you know, just thinking in my head, like, uh, you know, 
the way Georgia – see, Georgia – GHS, like TSSAA is still the ruling body in Tennessee, correct? Yes. TSSAA, yeah. okay. Correct. Um, with Georgia, it's the, it's the GHSA. So the GHSA makes all the rules. They enforce, they enforce all the rules. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of interesting how a lot of times they're super involved, and then sometimes they're just like, okay, we're, gonna, we're letting the regions – and the local schools determine how, well, this is what they're doing. They're saying, basically, we are not canceling spring sports. We are, we are, you know, letting the, the, the regions decide what they want to do. Um, and, and I'm thinking to myself, this is ridiculous because if you've got like our region is a, is some schools from Cobb County and a bunch of schools from Cherokee County to the North. Okay. You've also got, 7A schools that are in Cobb and Cherokee. So if 6A says, oh, we're going to play, but 7A, those don't. I, I just don't, I don't understand how you can have, how they can, they, can, they, can, they can leave it up to the individual local schools and regions to do that. Yeah. It doesn't seem fair, and it seems like that's too much pressure put on those. Because all it is is region committees. It's head coaches. So you're going to say, you're going to just put it up to the head coach, hey, we're going to play this. No, I just don't see – I don't think that's the right move. I think doing what Tim has done is probably better. Yeah, you, we don't – those guys don't get paid enough to make decisions, life decisions like that. No, no. And, and they shouldn't be that's, – that's too much liability for them. I mean, can you imagine if they decide to play and, and – somebody gets, you know, a whole team gets sick or and right. somebody passes, I'm passed away because, I mean, that would just be, that would be number one, it'd be just a tragedy, but um, there would be no protection for them. I, I don't, I don't see. So um, it's, it's kind of tough and you're just kind of, I don't know, yeah. you know, it's almost like you're at, at the mercy of, uh, you know, you're just at the mercy of whatever the, everybody else is doing. Like, I mean, as soon as the NBA canceled, that was it. Don't you think that was Absolutely. The, the that middle of the week, that Wednesday, when that happened? I mean, did you get a sense when you were at school that day and that next day that mm, I better get my stuff together because this is we're not going back here? What was the uh, feeling yeah. like? I, I you know because I know it was the fifteenth or excuse me the the 12th of March when we found out that we were getting canceled as of the 16th. I know you guys had been out a while. Yeah. yeah. I've been out since, uh, right. Let's see. We've been out since March the 6th. I think, uh, Friday, March the 5th was our last day. And then we were going to take two days off the 6th and the 9th of Friday, Monday. And then we were coming back Tuesday and then they made a call to us like at 5.30 in the morning, just like a snow day call out. Right. They were saying, hey, no school. And then all of a sudden, it just kept trickling down, and we never went back. They gave so us y'all that. have not been back since March the 5th. That's, That's correct. That's correct. Wow. Okay. We made it, we made it one, more, one more week. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when that Thursday came and we found out, sort of like later in the day, I, you know, it was one of those deals where, you know, I was talking to my, my buddy, I was talking to Terry and I said, you know, this is not, you know, we may, we may not, we may not come back like before spring break. And I was thinking, you know what, this two week deal, they'll probably keep us an extra week and take us into spring break. That, that would put us back. That would bring us back April the 13th. And I got to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see it right now. I don't see, you know, they're closed through March 31st schools in Georgia are, but I don't, I don't see us coming back April 1st and I don't see us coming back. maybe April 13th either. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I mean, in Tennessee, you know, I don't, it's just uh, one of these things where we got, uh, you know, you get more tests comes out, uh, comes back positive. The numbers keep escalating. I just don't. Obviously, I don't see it happening. But you know, we'll, 
you got cities like New York or, you know, states like New York, California, Washington, who are, you know, are in, seems like big trouble that, yeah. you know, you can't say, all right, everybody, let's go back to school. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Um, I, I think that would be a little premature, be a lot premature. Um, and, and a little, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, not very responsible, yeah. uh, you know, because, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, groups of people and, you know, with all the stats I'm seeing about this, the, the, the RO number is between three and four with this. And what that means is every person that has it has potential to infect three to four people. And I saw some numbers today that just scared me to death because one person infected and it's a geometric progression. So that one person infects three, those three can infect nine, those nine can infect 27 and on and on and on until about two weeks out, you've got 15 million people infected. Okay. Now we're not looking at any sort of type of uh, demographic there. That's just a number. We don't know who those people, you know, who those people would be that would be infected. We're just looking at a flat number uh, just, just from there. So um, that's scary. That's a scary thing uh, to see those statistics like that. Um, you know, and the fact, the fact that we, we're not sure about the incubation period, we're not sure how long that people can have it and also um, give it to people. You know, we're using this 14 day quarantine as just like a guy I've heard as low as five days and as high as 37 days. So what is it? You know, I don't know that we know. And the fact that you're sitting in a beach house in a, in a, um, uh, a community in which you are the only person there. Am I correct? Like there's no, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, as far as I can tell. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, they, may that, be in, that, they may be inside. Right. I mean, that speaks volumes that at least people down there are taking it seriously and staying inside, which is, which is good. And, um, yeah. you know, but again, you know, Paul and I are sitting here talking and, um, for, uh, drive through sports, our, our first official, um, uh, first official episode really. And, uh, you know, obviously, Lots of stuff going on in the NFL. Everything uh, it, needs to be, you know, pushed towards, you know, everything is, is sort of like going from and dropping from this coronavirus and all the restrictions and everything that we're going off of, and, um, you know, the online education and stuff. Let me ask how your kids are doing with that. How well, obviously, are, we're, we're on spring break this week. Okay. <clears throat> so starting Monday – you know, they're provided online resources and stuff like that. Okay. That, that, did they, they already can, have a platform in place or did they have to, or, or were they like us and just kind of had to scramble and get stuff together? A little bit of both. Uh, we have a, a pretty good online tool that uh, we use from Google, but uh, the, the county has provided these, these kids with some online resources, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I mean, that, I just, a guy down the street, his dog, and I made sure I stayed about 15 feet from him, but we had kind of had a conversation in passing and he's got three little kids and he's got to work. Like he and his wife both work. And so they, uh, they are being kept by a neighbor down the street. And he's like, yeah, man, he's like, we got to take like, you know, computers and stuff down there and, you know, to you know, make sure they're staying on task and stuff. And, He's like, man, he's like, it's a lot of work. And, and I think people are starting to realize that, you know, you know, they're, they're, they've got maybe, maybe two or three kids in their house that are having to keep up with work. Oh, well, we teach 120 every four months, every semester, you know, we teach 120 a day. And uh, I think it's, I think they're starting to realize, you know, that, that, we we got a lot of work that we do and uh i think you're going to see you know teachers uh probably get a little bit more um respect uh from this whole outcome uh 
just because no, I don't think if you haven't been in a classroom, you don't know. I mean, you just don't, you, you don't know what it's like. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really lucky. I got great, I got great students, um, and, and, and great parents, but I mean, shoot, not every teacher's like that. Not every teacher's <laughs> lucky to have the kids I got. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but it's, it, it can be a challenge sometimes. And I know you, I know you've been there. I mean, you've taught at, have you taught at private school versus public? What's, you know, what's your, any similarities or anything that just like jumps off the page at you as being massively different, different? Um, you know, no, not really. I mean, the kids are kids. Um, obviously at the, the private school level, the, you know, you got a little more to hold them over their head. You know, if they're, uh, you know, Hey, if you're not a good fit with our school, we'll see you later kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously the kids are, you know, they act the way they're going to act, no matter if they're private or public, in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think you got, as long as you can give them, uh, you know, and, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, you teaching the kid, you're teaching the kid, not the subject matter. <laughs> um, you know, when I got, when I got interviewed, that was the, I didn't realize this at the time, but my, my, uh, my principal asked me, he said, Hey, are, you know, are you, do you see yourself as a, as a uh, teacher of uh, students or a teacher of subject matter? And I didn't I think much about it. And I was like, well, you know, anybody can teach subject matter, you know, read a book and, you know, teach a lesson. I said, I'm a teacher of students. And apparently that was the right answer because that's, <laughs> that's what got me the job. I didn't find that out until many years later that he asked that question to every prospective teacher and even if he liked you and your resume was awesome if you didn't answer that question right you were gone and he didn't hire you so I kind of once I heard that I've kind of always tried to do that but you know there's all kinds of you know you don't need to you don't need to have you know learn this standard today and that standard tomorrow to learn something and to teach a kid something you know you can teach a kid something um, in the most, you know, innocuous way, um, without a lesson plan, without showing them, you know, without, without it being pre-planned out. I mean, I, I think, and, um, I try to do that too. Um, and I think those are the ones that the kids remember, um, remember the most, you know, years down the line, but, um, you know, I don't know. You can tell, you can tell nothing's going on when, uh, <laughs> When ESPN's replaying freaking Virginia Tech Miami. Yeah. Well, hey, I got some good news for you, man. Talk to me. Before we go, I don't I don't know, but you know, you were talking about the Falcons. Uh, they yeah. just got a new addition. Wait, oh gosh. Who did they get? Uh another receiver. Uh was it wait, was that Nelson Aguilar? Uh, nah, close. <laughs> another Another young a young man that uh, was the number one draft pick, Corey Davis. Yeah, no. uh, former Ole Miss wide receiver, Laquan Treadwell. Really? Huh? Yeah. Where is he from? Uh, Minnesota. Uh, yeah. Uh, statistics wise, uh, Laquan, uh, two, 2018, 35 catches. 2019, nine catches. So uh, another big pickup by the uh, Falcons. Was he hurt last year, or was it just lack of targets from Diggs and and uh? You know the uh, the Vikings are pretty stacked at receiver. Yeah, I think that's just that's just a, that's just too many, uh, you know, too many receivers. I mean, you know, you know, Diggs and uh, Thielen, they're going to get the lion's share. They're going to get eighty percent of your of your targets anyway. Uh, Treadwell is he the guy that broke his leg at Ole Miss? <laughs> uh, oh, seriously it may be maybe okay um all right i like that i like that pickup why not sure i, th- I think yeah i think he's uh you got ryan Gurley, jones ridley treadwell hayden hurst tight end hayden hurst that's who we picked up yeah jake matthews uh matthews. james carpenter alex mack lindstrom 
and McGarry and round Gary. out everybody. There's, so there yeah. they go, man. So, well, I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, people don't get this. And, you know, we had a great high school coach uh, at Harrison, passed away last year, uh, Bruce Cobley. Um, I tell you what, we had some teams that when we got off the bus, we didn't scare nobody. We didn't scare them coming off the bus, but we beat the brakes off of them on the field. And it was all coaching. And the NFL is no different. The NFL is no different. How's Belichick win when he's got Brady and a bunch of nobodies? When he's got Brady and David Patton at wide receiver? <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Ha- I mean, it's coaching. It's yeah, coaching. Sure. And the for Falcons sure. don't have – the Falcons don't have coaching. Well, There's maybe six or eight teams that have really good coaches. I think – New England has a really good coach. I think the Saints and Sean Payton, really good. I think the Buccaneers, Bruce Arians, very good. Um, I like the guy up in Minnesota, Zimmer. Um, I don't know what to think of the guy in Green Bay, the young guy. What's his name? Um, oh, LaFleur. Uh, LaFleur, La yeah. I mean, he was a quarterback coach at – Atlanta, I don't know. I think I think Shanahan out in San Francisco is really good. Um, I think the guy at Baltimore is really good. Um, but I mean, beyond that, I don't know that you've got any really just great, great coaches um, out there. You know, I think it's it's a bunch of retreads, a bunch of guys that just move around from one team to another. Oh, I didn't. I got fired as a head coach. I'll be go be a coordinator with my buddy over. At, the other team or whatever. Um, Mike McCarty. Who? Mike McCarty, Dallas Cowboys. I mean, exactly. I mean, like, you know, it's just everybody just gets shuffled around about every three or four years. You know, it's, you know, nothing new under the sun. So, uh, but I do think coaching in the NFL is huge. Is yeah, for sure. Um, what you got, brother? Any All last right, man. words? No, man, let's have fun with this thing. And, uh, you know, maybe some more sports will – pop up as we uh keep this thing going and uh you know who knows man uh adam you may uh create some merch for all our fans <laughs> hey let's do it baby that's as of as of right now as of right now we have none so uh, there you go but uh yeah there there are zero fans um but yeah anyway so hopefully we'll have more to talk about uh next episode um Maurice, you want to do this like every night? I mean, what do you want to do? I got nothing going on. I got, <laughs> <laughs> got nothing going uh, see, on. This, see, this is perfect, man. This is perfect. Now, see, we can, I can stop the recording and we can keep talking. If you oh, want. absolutely. All right. So, all right, guys, for, um, for Paul Brees, uh, Adam Freeman here, um, and for both of us, for – the uh, inaugural episode of Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Thank you guys for listening and uh, check out my website, HoyaNationSports.com, uh, and tune in every night at six o'clock for a replay of the Hoyas 2019 championship season. All right, we'll see you guys later for the Drive Through Sports Drive Through Sports podcast. Later, guys. <laughs>